Welcome to this happy place. Welcome. Please stand clear of the doors. For the Lord of the Dead. Is this here the world? It's a world. 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 So today on Miles from Main Street, we are talking to an Imagineer, but not just any Imagineer. We are talking to Topper Helmers. He was behind such classics as Dinoland USA, Disney's California Adventure, and the Indiana Jones ride at Disneyland. Uh, This has been something that I've been working on for about a month maybe a little more than that, to get him on the show. Um, I was able to meet him for the first time at the Chicago Comic Convention, and I did not know what gold mine I had found. As you'll hear, he was involved with some of the initial DCA meetings uh, that you know that created what was the first iteration of Disney's California Adventure. He was also the fourth team member to join the Indiana Jones Temple of the Forbidden Eye attraction at Disneyland. Uh, He does amazing sketch work, concept work, and he has some incredible stories. This is one time that you are going to want to hit the subscribe button and share it out with a friend because after this interview, we have a lot more coming. And it's exciting to be able to uh, talk to him and talk to some of his friends in the future. Yes, so definitely hit that subscribe button. I would say mash, probably mash the subscribe button and share it out. Let Shout it to the rooftops. Hey, Miles from Main Street is talking to Imagineers, and they have some wonderful stories like you'll hear in this interview that we have. Well, why don't we get it started, Mikhailo? Yeah, I think that would be a wonderful idea. So, Topper, thank you so much for joining us on the show. You're We're welcome. so excited to be able to talk to you today about your career. Um, how did you get started in the art field? In the art field, oh, um, I and 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 I and right out of high school into college, I got into uh, I went I went I was in a school in Ohio, Youngstown State, and I got to meet two or three other kids who were into who were into comic books, and literally um, Val Merrick, Paul Galisi, both were from Youngstown. Uh, Peter Craig Russell was from Kent, so that was a half hour, 45 minutes away. Uh, Cleveland had a whole bunch of people, you know, most cartoonists. Dan Atkins was in just Wheeling, so that he was just south of uh, Youngstown. But Val was from Youngstown State, too. So he came in to do a a class, and we got to go sit in on him. And afterwards, I walked up to him as green as could be and said, can you use an apprentice? And he said, Sure. This is when I work from 10 at night to six in the morning. <sighs> so I would go sit at his, you know, I learned more from him in one night of how a professional worked than I had spent learned in two and a half years of art school. Oh, wow. So I moved, I ended up moving to New York where I, I broke, was breaking into DC comics and a relative, um, how I got into Imagineering I had never even heard of Imagineering, but at the time I was married to my first wife and she had a first cousin who was, who was married to a fine artist and they would come in for art expo in New York city. So we went in to meet him for the city, had dinner. And next thing I know, we're moving to California where I'm going to go ghost for this woman. And um, she was doing so well that they were building a, a, a huge house and they had hired an architect that had been in Imagineering for 17 years. And I was just in the process of starting to storyboard commercials and, and live action stuff around town, doing uh, ad agency stuff. And he said, you know, just like movies, Imagineering storyboards everything. So maybe we can get you in that way. So I literally got hired in theme park productions, which is a small division of Imagineering. And so if, if you're standing in a queue line or standing in any line and you're looking at a monitor with a TV or, you know, a screen on it and they're showing you any kind of film, that's theme park productions. It's, it was a very small group. And um, okay. that's how I got into WDI. 
And then after about three months, they couldn't figure out what to do with me. And show design picked me up and I, I never looked back 33 years ago. And you spent, you pretty much had a straight stint for about eight years with Imagineering, right? Eight and a half years. I, I found out on a Friday night that um, they weren't renewing my contract. But so by the time I got home, which was, I lived in, Bur- I lived a half a block north of the Disney studio in Burbank. And in the, in the five minutes it took me to get home, I had three phone calls. And one of them was from somebody that I worked with at Imagineering, who is now at Universal Creative. And Monday morning, I was working at Universal Creative. <laughs> wow. And I, and, and I walked in and I said, well, I just got to let you know that in three weeks, I have my exit interview at WDI with Marty Scalar. And I walked into my exit interview with Marty wearing a universal name tag and badge. <laughs> and he just, it just made him laugh. And Marty was a good guy. <laughs> Marty seemed like he was a really good guy from what I've heard of stories. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you, you got into Disney and, you know, we were talking earlier that you worked on Indiana Jones forbidden not the, Temple of the Forbidden Eye. Temple of the Forbidden Eye. Thank you. Um, you were you worked on Dino Land USA, um, California Adventure. Uh, I do really love Dino Land. There's a lot of people out there that think Dino Land needs to be redone, but I think the story work that has been done and the theming, like around Chester and Hester's and Restaurantosaurus, I think is some of the best theming that's been done. Um, so I just I, I really love it. Do you get a chance to go visit your work? And what's it like to see that stuff? Uh, I, I've got a mixed emotion about Dino Land. Because um, I had just come on two and a half years off Indy. Um, I ended up in jury duty downtown LA. And the minute I came, I, I was off of a jury for two weeks. I came back and I was instantly put into a, uh, uh, Animal Kingdom on Dino Land, and the two people, the the art director and the producer, two women that I knew well, and me, and and it was the three of us. And the the interesting thing was, I've been into dinosaurs since I was four years old. I've, I I love dinosaurs, everything about them. And these two women had no idea. I mean, they, they knew that they were, you know, we were designing Dino Land, but they didn't have any real, real world knowledge of dinosaurs. Okay. You know, for mm. example, one of my favorite stories is, you know, one of the first things they wanted me to design was this Brachiosaurus bridge that you were going to walk down or you could walk through the, the, the rib cage across into the, into the area. And I said, All right, that's, that's nice. Where are you getting the Brachiosaurus? Oh, we're just going to call the museum and get it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think you quite understand how dinosaur museums work. The only brachiosaurus at the time, a fully constructed brachiosaurus, the only one in in the world was at the museum in Berlin uh, of natural history. And they've never shared it with anybody. So I don't think you're just going to call them and tell, you know, oh, we're Disney. We're going to just get it. It doesn't work that way. And they would look at me like, but we're Disney. And I'm like, I don't think you seem to understand how science, you know, science museums work, you know, and I can't, you know, but I, I got to draw it all. And then um, because I'm always usually in at the beginning of concept, that that's what I like to do. I don't, the minute I have to worry about where air ducts are going and steel beams are going, I don't care. It's, <laughs> I, I, it's, it's, I can draw that stuff until I'm blue in the face, but you know, it's, I'm more interested in selling you on what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. You you have an idea of what we're going to do, and I'm going to draw it, and we're going to sell it for you. You know, and when you get a script, you know, where, where a writer is giving you a script, and they're going, you know, you can hand the script to anybody you want, and you can read it till you're blue in the face, and you you look at it like it's just words. But the minute you show them a picture, you go, "Oh, I get it." <laughs> so I I was designing all the you know the restaurant that you like. Every gallery, I was I was having so much fun just drawing that stuff, and 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 the next time we talk, I'll bring out a portfolio of just the dinosaur stuff I did for Dino Land. 
But for example, <laughs> I would draw these galleries and just like every bit of Disneyland or any other outdoor theme park, every time you've got food anywhere, you've got hundreds of sparrows, little sparrows hopping around, stealing food. So I was drawing this diner restaurant with all these people and families and little kids walking for the first time and Charles Knight murals on the walls and skeletons everywhere and everything dinosaur, dinosaur, dinosaur. But instead of little sparrows, I was drawing like little dino or like Dino dinosaurs, like, you know, little dinosaurs begging for food and, and crawling <laughs> oh, through the cool. tables. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I thought it was cool that everybody else thought it was cool. And the first real world experience I had with a bean counter was in concept, you know, in blue sky and concept at the very beginning of, of these phases, it, it's whatever you can draw or, or imagine. And then you start whittling it down to what the actual design is going to be. Mm -hmm. And the first time I was asked to sit in with, with, the bean counters, the accountants to come in where they figured out actually how much this was going to cost. The guy looks at me, goes, well, how many of these little dinosaurs that you're drawing are all animatronics? And I'm like, what are you talking about? They're just, they're just drawings. It's me being silly. And the guy was taking it literally and was getting ready to price this out, which would have, Oh, would yeah. have shot crap out of the budget. Sure. You know, and I, I was, I thought I was just being clever trying to make the, the drawings fun and interesting. And this guy was being literal. And I was just like, Oh, I've got problems. <laughs> Did that change how you went about new sketches then were you kind of like picking and choosing what you wanted to put in there? Um, from that point on, it was kind of on the straight and narrow. I mean, if somebody started messing with me, I, I would do silly stuff in the background that if you weren't paying attention, <laughs> would get me in a lot of trouble, I guess. Um, uh, an early example was on one of the earliest Indiana Jones drawings that they wanted a, a big shot of um, the, this. Oh God. From the first movie, I'm losing my mind. Um, the city, the lost city that they find, you know, they mm -hmm. figure out where that thing is. The, I'm not saying it right. Anyway. So I do this big drawing, you know, and there's the, 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 the big, snake heads on top and 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 i did you know it was probably i don't know two feet by you know three feet by two feet it was a good size drawing and oddly enough when the architect of reassurance disney traveling wdi show that went around the world the one piece of mine that they picked out was this piece and i'm like okay that's kind of cool the problem was was nobody was paying attention that in the bottom lower left hand corner up against the wall there's this guy with his hands on the wall and he's dropped his cane with a little red tip. The guy's blind and he can't find his way. Everybody's walking by him <laughs> oh, and this no. guy's lost. <laughs> and this is the picture. This is the drawing that they put in the, in the tour. So, I mean, I, I, I quit doing most of that. But a lot of times I would, if somebody would, like I said, would be messing with me, I, I'd tell them things that weren't there. And then they would spend like hours looking for something that I didn't draw in there. So. I've done that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of funny. I I part of me, I mean, it sounds like it it didn't really inhibit you, but part of me wonders if if some sometimes those meetings with like the accountants and everything kind of like stifled your creativity. Um, but I mean, it sounds like you 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 had a good laugh with them every so often. Um, the the sad part about it was was I was always in so early. In the, in the process that by the time you got to accountants, I was already moved on to something mm. different. So um, on Dino Land, I'm trying to think. Here, here's a good example. So I'm having lunch with with my friend Jenna Goodman, who I'll get you guys in touch with. Mm -hmm. She's And we're sitting there and Joe Rohde walks by. And I go, you know, so I knew he had just come back from Florida, you know, Animal Kingdom is being built. And I go, Joe, how's, how's all my dinosaur drawings go? And Joe looked at me and goes, Popper, they look exactly like your drawings. We are so happy with everything. And that was it. So he walked on. So I had my lunch with Jenna. And then when they did the, um, the thank you book, everybody who worked on the project got a book. And, you know, and everybody's name is in this book, you know, being thanked, you know, and it was Joe Rohde's wife who, who did the book for WDI. 
and I'm not in it. <laughs> and I'm like, and, and that was constantly happening to me because I was in so early mm-hmm. and out so fast in concept that a lot of times when, when, when all the swag starts being given out, nobody remembers that I was there doing this a year and a half ago or two years ago. Mm. So that, that was kind of hard to take. Yeah. I bet. So I do, I do wonder when you did finally get to walk into Dino land or anything else there, did it look like the pictures? Like Joe said, it looked exactly like everything. Nice. Um, (laughs) That's awesome. the, The only things that I didn't do were, but at the time they hadn't gotten the you know the the big T Rex skeleton that's out in front of Countdown to Extinction mm-hmm. the, the replica that hadn't gone up for auction yet. So I had you know there was no way to know that you know Disney was going to be one of the five corporations to get their hands on an actual T Rex skeleton. Mm-hmm. You know, so I didn't draw that. And standing on a little bridge, looking down on an American crocodile, was like, okay, that's cool i didn't know we had crocodiles here in america <laughs> i knew i knew about alligators and other stuff but i didn't know there was you know it, indigenous to you know florida there were crocodiles you know so that was those was, as far as i'm concerned those are the only two things i didn't have my hands on hmm. so you've already kind of talked about like you know your work was early on in the process um what kind of direction are you getting at that point Really, for the most part, all right, so I was the fourth person on the Indiana Jones team. Um, Bob Bernick, it was his idea, him and Gary Bloomstein, they, they were the two kind of sharing credits for uh, creating Indy. Uh, there was a, another, a, an elderly senior designer named Dan Glock. He's passed away now. and And I was the fourth person on the team. So a lot of times... We were, we would sit, the four of us would get together and go, all right, what can we do? And you're off and running, you know? So it's like, I, I did hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of drawings. Some of them little thumbnails, some of them, you know, bigger than, you know, five feet across as big as my drawing table was. And so, you know, in the beginning it's, it's when Indy first got going, it was like, we were all struggling to figure we probably spent a good year, year and a half trying to figure out what it was for Indiana Jones that we were, we were trying to get to there's Indy was always trying to get, you know, he was trying always racing with the Nazis or somebody else to get to the artifact. And we were trying, you know, in the beginning we were doing Mayan, you know, and then they decided that, well, Southern California is too close to Mexico. So that's not a good idea. And then it was, you know, different locations. And then we, it, it ended up being settling on uh, in India or Egypt or wherever, you know, someplace Middle Eastern. And so a lot of times, I've, even though I've got all the scripts that were ever done for Indy, a lot of that stuff really didn't phase me as much because it was, it was all being written as the same time as I'm drawing it. You know, the first okay. seven, eight months, most of the drawings I did, we were, you know, you're just making up stuff because you're, it, it's, it starts off, it, it's called blue sky. Mm-hmm. If, if you don't know the, the theme parks have its own language. And, and, and when you're on a project, the way I describe it is picture a funnel. The top ring is blue sky. And the next phase down would be concept. And then you start getting into, you know, you start getting into accounting and all the stuff. And then the very small opening is the small is the soft opening and the actual opening of the ride, but it starts doing a lot of this. So when you're doing blue sky, you're just, you know, we're just drawing our little hearts out, having a blast. <laughs> and a lot of the stuff we were doing with, I mean, I've got hundreds of drawings of Indy and, and you and the Jeep that we were going to put you on or the, the mine car buckets or whatever we were racing with, you were racing, there, there's Nazis everywhere. And then at some point somebody goes, there's no way you're ever, they're going to ever let you put Nazis in Disneyland. <laughs> and I'm going, all right. Th- I mean, that it made sense to me. I mean, I, you know, but the sad part about it was when Indy, when we were working on the ride, 
all we had to work from was the first movie, the second movie, the third movie, I don't think was even out yet. There was no young Indiana Jones. There was one or two paperbacks out. There might have been one or two comic books out, but that's all we had. So there was a place in town not too far in North Hollywood called uh, Eddie Brant's. And it was literally anything you wanted on film, they had it on tape. They, they'd been, I mean, stuff oh, wow. that you, I mean, just anything. So we knew we had, we knew that George Lucas and, and Spielberg had been looking at all the, uh, the old movie serial. So we, we literally figured out which ones they had checked out and we, we checked them all out. So we were watching what they were watching, mm. trying to figure out where this was going to go. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, we were just kind of winging it for the longest time. And then it starts, you know, it starts funneling down the, the funnel and the ride eventually opened. So a lot of your work is kind of fleshing out the story. It sounds like. In concept and blue sky, that's what it is. Yeah. So, um, when I started in 1990 at WDI, um, Blue Sky was about six months. Concept was another or six to nine months. Concept was another six to nine months. By the time I moved from Southern California to here, um, I, I work on projects now where Blue Sky and Concept is now two and a half, three weeks. Hmm. Oh, wow. I mean, it's like you hit the ground running and you're you're moving fast. And, I, and luckily for me, I'm I've always been really fast. I'm very confident, very efficient at what I do. So. But, you know, when you had six months to just, I guess, play, it would be that, you know, would, wouldn't be would be the, the safest way to say it. You know, you, you figured out stuff that worked and what didn't work. Uh, I have to I have to ask. Um, this has always kind of been um, lore with me, with um, the Indiana Jones ride. Um, and you may or may not have been involved in something like this, but um, and this may be with you doing blue blue sky work kind of further down the funnel from you. Uh, but did you have any, like, were you fleshing out any like effects that were happening? Because people like to talk about um, the rubble effect that, that happened on Indiana Jones. Were, were those kind of the things that you were like implying in some of your drawings or was that just left up to the that Imagineers that were building? The, mm-hmm. the, you're talking about the ice machines. Yep. Yep rubble ice machines that worked for about a month, month and a half. Yep, exactly. (laughs) I I only ever saw it once. Mm -hmm. We came around the corner, the the ice fell. Mm -hmm. It was so dark. You just saw, you saw shapes dropping, but you couldn't really tell that it was gravel or rocks or ice, but Mm -hmm. I don't need, I'm not even sure they really lasted long enough to get to the rides. And they had three industrial ice machines on the roof that -hmm. were supposed to be cranking that stuff out to drop that. Uh, that came after me. Okay. So, Indy and Dino, Dino Land, that was a lot of some of the work you were doing in the 90s. Um, you also did work with California Adventure. Um, I'm curious what kind of projects you did there. So what happened with that, um, after Dino Land, I was on fire drills for about a, six months, seven months, meaning that, you know, some art director would come up to you and go, I need four drawings by tomorrow. Really? You couldn't give me more time than that, but, you know, <laughs> that's the way it went. <laughs> so there was a lot of little tiny projects that, I couldn't even name if my life depended on it other than a couple weeks worth on uh, some stuff for Epcot innovations. I did a bunch of stuff on that, but I, my manager came in and said, we're sending you to Aspen for a charrette, which like, okay, I don't know what that means, but they're, they're, they're putting me up on the G five company Learjet. Michael was up in, um, and at his winter home or home summer home or whatever it was in Aspen. And it was easier to fly up 32 heads of the company, presidents and vice presidents and three Imagineers to, to Aspen for a, a two day charrette on what turned out to be Disney's California adventure. 
Okay. So you were involved with some of the early meetings and then from the very, very beginning, the very start. Wow. So originally Disney's California adventure was supposed to be this like preview travel logs for the state of California. There wasn't going to be anything in the Cal- in California adventure that wasn't made built from sponsored by Cal. It was, it was the history and story of California. So mm-hmm. that if you were coming from any other state, you could go to Disney's California Adventure as opposed to going to any other part of the state and getting a sense or a feeling of what California was all about. So I spent, I don't know, three, four months on the Bear Mountain, the the water, the you know, the the flume ride. Mm-hmm. I worked on that. I worked on um uh I did a bunch of work on the I'm trying to think. Um, Muppets hadn't been moved over. They were going to put in um, the paparazzi ride. Uh, and, and, um, and just about the moment that that was getting ready to open, Princess Diana got killed. Mm-hmm. And that just went right gone. I mean, that was just, that was it for that ride right there. Uh, Superstar limo. Yeah. That's what yeah, it's called. Yeah. Uh, I worked on that. Um, there was, I did a bunch of the, uh, I did a whole thing for, uh, there was a thing on, on the land and it was all sponsored by Caterpillar because it was Caterpillar, you know, instead of John Deere, it was Caterpillar tractors because they're all out of California. So there was, I did all kinds of Caterpillar tractors and we went up to, uh, up above Bakersfield to the, there's a, a huge ag expo once a year. I mean, people from all over the world come to this. And so we went there and we got to drive tractors and I love doing that stuff. So I got to do a bunch of drawings for that. Um, let's see what else. Um, there was a, um, I storyboarded a whole land. Oh, God, what was the name of it? It's um, Whoopi Goldberg. You'd walk in and there was a statue of, of um, Callie from, uh, you know, the goddess of California, which is what California is named mm-hmm. after. Okay. And it was all about, you know, the, the, the Chinese coming and building the railroads and, and I, I storyboarded all of that. And then I was asked to storyboard. Um, I was supposed to go up with um, Rick Rothschild, get on a helicopter and storyboard all of the um, flying over California. And that didn't happen. I, I think I, I got moved off to something else. Mm. So I never got the chance to do that. But there, there was a bunch of stuff that I was, you know, there was a lot of the, the, the metal rides at the far end, the roller coasters. And, you know, there was a wild mouse ride that I got to work on. So there was a bunch of stuff there. Uh, the mouse ride, you mean like goofy sky school? Yeah. The, 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 there was the roller coaster. I, I had, I was drawing that stuff in the background. Okay. There was, uh, there was stuff supposed to look like the Monterey, you know, uh, piers. So I was, you know, I was drawing a lot of that stuff where they were make where they made the fresh tortillas and stuff. Hmm. But okay. it, since then, as you know, it, California Adventure came in and or uh, not, not uh, Cars Land came through, and mm-hmm. you know, so that none of that stuff was there. Um, Bugs, Bugs Life. Oh yeah, and we lost Bugs Life. Mm-hmm. That was there originally. <laughs> um. The Drop Hotel, uh, the Twilight Zone. Um, Tower of Terror. Tower of Terror, thank you. Um, that, was, that wasn't that was being planned for yet. So, okay. You mentioned the tractors with, um, I forget the, the name of the land you had said, but you had, I did see uh, in some of my searching that you had done a drawing for, I think it was called tractor yard or something. And I wanted to ask about it because it immediately made me think of that tow meter ride or not. Yeah. Where the tractors are all kind of in the, um, the whipping ride that they have there. Right. I can't, I'm blanking on the name right now, but mm-hmm. um, junkyard spin. So did you happen to later on, harken back to that or get, no, get to no. this was strictly i mean this was the the land that i worked on was literally farms i mean they were going to plant vegetables and 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 we had tractors sitting around and and farm you know it was like being in a in the mid part of the state just all farmland 
So, you know, those sheds okay. and those trucks, you know, pickup trucks and, you know, and corn growing and, and the stuff that they grew in the middle of the state and Caterpillar tractors, because that was a calorie. That was one of the sponsors. I well, think I, the artwork looked exactly like the tractors you see in the uh, Cars movie. So I just <laughs> I'm going to give you the credit for being the uh, designer on that. <laughs> it wasn't me. I had nothing that, that had already California. People just didn't understand California's adventure when it opened. You know, it, it changed real fast. And then all of a sudden it was like, well, let's what happens if we just start putting in real other, you know, other stuff from the park and it slowly started taking over. Mm -hmm. I mean, the sponsors were um, one of the big tortilla companies, which I think is still there. Levi was, they were pushing Levi because, you know, the jeans were first came out of California caterpillar. Okay. Uh, there was, I think there was some guitar stuff. Hmm. But um, yeah, it, it it's not nearly what it was, you know, when we what 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 they had envisioned originally. But I'll show you something. I don't know if you can see this. That looks like a name tag. Okay. Uh, oh, 1955. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So what this was was at the end of this charrette for in Aspen. You know, they're in a, we're, there's 32 presidents of the company and three Imagineers. And I was one of the ones that you were part of a group that you were drawing as fast as they could come up with an idea. And at the end of it, this this was, like I said, this was all Michael Eisner. He said, you know, they, they gave everybody one of these. And on the back of it, it says, Disneyland will never be completed. It will continue to grow as long as there is imagination left in the world, Walt Disney. Disneyland expansion team Aspen Charette, August 2nd, 1995. And apparently the name, when, when you, when Disneyland first started, if you were the first employee, you had number one. If you were the second employee hired, you were number two. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they just dated it all 1955. Cause that was the year Disneyland opened. So I'm standing in a, you know, we're all leaving. We all have to go back to the little airport where we're going. You know, the group's going to go in two groups to be flown back to, to Burbank. And I'm standing next to Ed Sato. And Ed goes, you know, we really should. You know, I said, we really should go back in there and see if Michael will sign these. And Ed looked at me and reached in his pocket and pulled out a Sharpie. And we both walked back in the room. <laughs> so, Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, that's, that's cool. <laughs> wow. That is, yeah. So that hangs on the wall. I love that. So, so a lot of this is kind of like making me remember all of these little tidbits that I've heard about the beginning of um, California Adventure. So were were the so were you guys put into three different groups and you guys all kind of pitched something? Was that this meeting? The original charrette was, I mean, it was, you know, first of all, you're, you're, I, I was being flown up on the G5 with the, the, the company Learjet only held 16 people. So mm -hmm. you're being shipped up with 50, I was being shipped up with 15 mm -hmm. presidents and vice presidents from every division of, uh, from Disneyland. And then there was a second group that went up. So when they, Broke, they, they took us into a big conference room. They had a, a, a woman who came out and she was supposed to get the whole thing started. And out of this whole thing is where uh, Disney's California Adventure ended up coming. Mm. But it was literally you were they, they ended up breaking 32 people into t groups of 10. And you were part of I was part of a group of 10. So my job was to sit and, and scribble and draw as fast as possible. Mm you know, with, within my group of the ideas that they were coming up with. Mm -hmm. And then there was two other Imagineers that were doing the same thing with the other two groups. Very cool. Yeah. I, and I just through hearing about a lot of this, um, cause I mean, I've, I've, I've listened to different documentaries and I've watched, um, different things kind of talking, like literally talking about this, this meeting where everything came, um, 
uh, kind of came from. And so it's just, it's pretty crazy to hear that a, you, you were a part of that meeting and B just kind of like all of the, the things that came out of that and the ideas that they had. So that's, that's actually, it's pretty nuts to, <laughs> to hear you talk about it. So after, so after the first day meeting, everybody went back to Michael's house where there were, we had a big barbecue. Hmm. And I mean, that was, it was about, 30, 40 minutes outside of downtown Aspen. And if you've ever been to Aspen, it's not a big place. Mm -hmm. And 90% of everybody was put up in a, in a giant hotel right there where the, the, the conference was. And there was a, a Karen Armitage and I were the only ones we didn't have, they didn't have rooms for us. Mm -hmm. So they shipped us off, you know, about four blocks away to a little B and B where I had this unbelievable Victorian bedroom with this giant fireplace and this giant four poster bed. And <laughs> I mean, I guarantee none of these presidents had a room as nice as this place was, <laughs> <laughs> nice. so, which was, I, which Karen and I just, we just laughed because we had our own private hot tubs. And I mean, it was, <laughs> it, it was nice. pretty impressive, you know, but you know, we, 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 we weren't with the, the, the rest of the pack. Mm -hmm. So we, we go to Michael's house and, at the end of the dinner, they, they bring out this giant cake because that particular day they found out that they had just acquired ABC. Mm. Oh, wow. And so everybody, all the presidents of the company were singing to Michael, you know, happy acquisition for ABC, you know, it's like a happy <laughs> birthday song. And they, I'm just sitting here going, you know, here you're in a multi-million dollar mansion on the side of a mountain with the, the view that would you would have died for the rest of the house looked like a museum. I mean, it was just immaculate, you know, and I'm just like, Oh boy. I, I, it was like, you ever felt like you were a fish out of water. I mean, yeah. It, yeah. It just, I'm, I'm very low key about stuff. And this was like playing in a league that way over my head. Mm. But the well, second day uh, was um, that's where California adventure popped up. And I, I always kind of had the impression that there was three or four people that were guiding this, that always had that always kind of had that in their, in their head. And once they had that thing moving, everybody kind of just, you know, came to this, you know, came to kind of the same conclusion and it mm -hmm. just went from there. And then I went back to, you know, WDI in Burbank and I was given a land, which was the, uh, the mountain. And I was doing all kinds of stuff on that. So if you, the, at one point before the California adventure opened to the public, there was, these pavilions that they set up outside with preview art mm -hmm. and all the drawings of mine that were in there were all, you know, whitewater rafting rides and, and mm -hmm. under logs and, you know, floods and all kinds of, we were having so much fun drawing, you know, what you could do, what you couldn't do with, you know, a, an inner tube. Um, the, the, the interesting about thing about that was we, I, who, who came up with the idea that we were going to do a, a drop on a, on a, on a, you know, in a big inner tube that you're sitting in the middle of, and they weren't sure that they could pull it off because nobody had ever done that before, mm. you know, and California or uh, Disney's animal or uh, animal kingdom, they were talking about doing the same thing. So the two groups got together and we were going down to the park and doing all kinds of weird, wacky stuff to see what it felt like to go. I mean, we got to ride down splash mountain sitting in the cars backwards. Oh, so wow. when you do when you do the drop backwards, you were you were trying to figure out was this were you freaked out so bad that yeah you know, it was it was actually more enjoyable because when you couldn't see what you were doing, it wasn't mm. as bad a drop. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden okay. it was like okay if we could pull this off that you know the thing doesn't hit the water and flip over or do something weird, you know. But once they figured it out, it was like that had never been done before. Mm -hmm. I, I have to say that that land, uh, and that's really cool to hear that that you worked on that 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 mountain. The way that it looks like it's supposed to look look like a like a wolf or like a bear. It's a bear, um, like a bear head. Yeah. yeah. Um, just kind of like how like the rock work um, is kind of like making it look like a bear. And um, I've actually when we went out there, um, that ride was down because it was technically like winter time. Um, and so we weren't able, we weren't able to ride that one. There were a lot of stuff down when when we went to Disneyland, but um, 
that ride at Animal Kingdom is actually kind of like one of my my personal favorites, um, the Kali River Rapids. Um, so I was I was kind of let down that that wasn't open, but just kind of like seeing a lot of like how that ride works and everything. I, I, I really enjoy that. But yeah, that whole area right there. And then what's did you work on? Um, there's an there's the area kind of like right behind um, that mountain that's supposed to be kind of like a nature walk. Um, did you do any work on that? I did a little bit of work on that. It's it's all uh, climbing pole. It was all supposed yep. to be for kids to climb all over the ropes and and yeah. <laughs> rope bridges and stuff. Yeah, I did a mm-hmm. little bit of work on that, but not a lot. My uh, daughter loved that space when we were back there. <laughs> yeah, that's wanted- all still there, and it's all very yeah. cool. Yeah. And the reason it's a bear is because California's animal is is the grizzly mm-hmm. bear, yep. which I don't know why because there's none left. <laughs> but, I don't know. Yeah. I, as far as I know, there's no wild grizzly bears left in California. I mean, there's probably more here in Wisconsin. <laughs> grizzly, grizzly bears? Not grizzly bears. <laughs> I mean, they've got black bears and brown bears, mm-hmm. but I don't think they've got grizzlies left. I mean, it's you have to go to Canada or Alaska for that, or Montana mm-hmm. or you know Northern Idaho. But We've anyway, had, that's why that's yeah. why it's that's why it's a bear mountain. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that I did see in some of the work you were doing um, was that there was actually talk of replacing Jungle Cruise with, I don't know if it was going to be like an overlay or a re, you know, redoing the story, but you had done some work with Georgia the Jungle and putting that into Jungle Cruise. I'm curious about that because that was a movie that I remember seeing and kind of being like, yeah, it was it was okay. I didn't think it was as big as even Disney wanting to put it into the park. Okay. So that was towards the end of my run at WDI. What was going on was there was a lot of, um, it was a lot of synergy with, with what was being made in films. So where the, the Swiss family tree house, they were going to make into a Tarzan tree house because of the Tarzan animated film. Okay. So that was being mm-hmm. done. There were there was a talk of the Georgia the Jungle being made or being made to, to replace the Jungle Cruise. Um, one of the last things I worked on was um, for years and years and years they had been complaining that uh, twenty thousand leagues was leaking fifty thousand gallons of water a month or something really weird. <sighs> It, you oh, know, wow. it, which, which was all a lot of BS. It was only because it was it was a difficult ride to load. It was a difficult ride to unload. And you stood in line forever. And, you know, I mean, it was a lot of fun. But one of the last things that they were trying to do was refit the submarines to make them look like the ships from Atlantis, the, the, the animated film. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so you had the giant creature, you know, the Leviathan creature that would attack the sub. I mean, you know, the last things that I was doing was people sitting in the sub and all of a sudden the, the creature is attacking and all of a sudden water starts dripping on you, which was going to panic the crap out of people. <laughs> you know, you know, they, didn't, yeah. they didn't think that was going to be a good idea. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden you're stuck in a submarine and you think it's going to sink. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's genius. That's totally, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the joke was always, you always put a place in, in on one of the attractions, you know, don't go to this, don't go into this door. And that's the one door that everybody wants to go into. <laughs> yeah. you know? So it was like, you can't, you can't do stuff like that. So um, yeah, the, the jungle cruise, it, it lost a little bit when we were doing indie, we knew where the, the building was, go- the, the actual building was going to be put. And it was going to be on the outside of the berm of the railroad track. So it was going to be the first thing. Well, it wasn't the first thing because Haunted Mansion is actually on the outside of the railroad tracks. And so the um, Indiana Jones ride, we knew where the building was going to go into the parking lot, but we didn't know how we were going to get you there because you had to get around the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so at one point, there was a lot of drawings that we did of, of, you got on the jungle cruise, you went halfway, got off the boat, and then queued into a tunnel that got you to the ride. And then hmm. the ride was actually going to queue into 
a wild mouse ride because we, it was, again, we were only two movies into it. And you had the, the little bucket ride thing, you know, through the, the minds of the second movie. And we had the jungle ride or the Jeep ride that we knew where we were going to build. And so, you know, and we were, and one of the, the fun pitches were we had a third pitch so that when you queued in, you got into a maze that if, after you got through it, the walls would move so that it was never the same for anybody coming through it. So, <laughs> oh, geez. So, one way oh so you were going to get through the maze, and one way you'd end up in a, on the Jeep ride, one way you'd get to the, the, the bucket ride. And one way it dumped you back at the beginning of the, the oh whole time. <laughs> so, I mean, if you got lucky, unlucky enough, you were going to get dumped back at the beginning and have to start the line. And you do the queue all over again. <laughs> so, I did a handful of those drawings and that didn't last. And then the, the, they knew that the bucket ride was never going to get the, the ca- capacity that they needed for an attraction. So they pulled it, you know, so after, like, you know, almost eight months worth of working on, you know, doing drawings with that stuff. It, got, it just got yanked. And I was like, oh, that was disappointing. And then you find out that they're building it in Euro. Like, come on. <laughs> you know, I don't get oh, credit wow. for that. <laughs> um, you know, so, I mean, but if, I mean, if you've, if you've seen some of the really early drawings, there was a Brian Jowers did a drawing, which is what sold George Lucas on the whole idea was, you got the Jeep ride coming through. You've got the train going through the middle of it. You've got the bucket car going through a loop. And you had, um, what was there? There was a fourth ride. The, there was some kind of, there was another, uh, the, the, the Jungle Cruise boat was going through it. So you mm-hmm. had four, we were, we were actually going to do four attractions. All, you could have seen all four attractions in one giant chamber, that, which would oh, have been wow. phenomenal. Yeah, yes. that would have been really cool. So they decided that, Cutting the jungle. So, so after you got off the, the, the Indiana Jones ride, you were supposed to go back to the jungle cruise, get back on the boat, and finish the ride to get out. Mm-hmm. But well, somewhere along the line, they decided that there was enough space bet- right under the the uh, treehouse, and to the right was Pirates of the Caribbean. That if they cut out that one bit of channel, so they changed the channel. So instead of going all the way down and back, it just cut it shorter. So the the actual ride. Jungle Cruise was cut short, and the mm-hmm. queue line was in, there was enough room to make the queue line for for Indy right there. And then you you know you you go through all the chambers, you funnel under the the railroad and back up into the you know to the wind gallery, and then go into the Sala room where you know Sala is talking. I storyboard mm-hmm. and all of that, and then you went oh. up, and then you came back and you got on the the, the actual ride. Actually, I, I I remember when when because I'm the only one that has actually ridden that ride. Um, when I got to that part of the queue, that that was really cool. I I, I loved that room that that when you got in there and they were kind of talking. Well, some of the fun parts that most people I don't know how many people know it at this point. I'm sure most of them. Have, but when you're going, you know, after you hear you go supposedly go through, you know, you're queuing down, you're queuing down to Mm -hmm. the the lowest point under the railroad before you queue back up. And there's a, you know, there's beams that if you, it looks like if, you know, you could grab one. Well, if you grab it and pull it, all of a sudden it hears this loud boom. And all of a sudden spikes start coming out of the ceiling and it it goes for, I don't know, a couple inches and stops, but it's meant to do that. So (laughs) they they do things like that. So when you get up to the one room, there's a, a well, with ropes on the side. Well, if you grab the rope and start pulling on it, you hear somebody screaming at the bottom. Well, that's John Cleese. So they got him to do the voiceover for, you know, help me get out of the world or whatever he says, you know, and then you get into the next room where they've got, you know, the Sala up on, you know, talking about what you have to do to get on the ride. Mm-hmm. And, you know, once you get through that, you go up over the bridge and down to the, the actual load. I love John Cleese. I, I did not know that he was doing that voice. So, um, all right. So you've done a ton of work. You've done stuff all over the world. And I know we're, we're Disney centric and we've focused on a lot of the Disney stuff, but is there something else that maybe is not Disney related that you're really proud of? The presidential Lincoln library in Springfield. Hmm. I'm all over that building, the museum. That so, is 
That's awesome. I, that's really cool. I have that? not. I have not. Um, it, but as you say it, I think my son would absolutely love it. And I should probably get him there because I would enjoy that, too. Mm-hmm. It, it's not like a, a, a to me, a museum is usually dead things in a box. That That's usually the term that we refer to them as. You know, it's you look at something, it's it's a dead thing. It's 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 you know, it's an artifact. It's something. But it's there's nothing that happens. You know, and with the, mm-hmm. the presidential Lincoln Library, it, it's like a theme park. It, mm. It's it's absolutely amazing. And from the minute you walk in, there's a giant information. It, when you walk into the foyer, there's a giant information desk, and behind it is a giant billboard. And every bit of art on that wall is mine. I did mm-hmm. every single building, every the big map, and they've got these giant cutouts for monitors, so you can see different locations that were important to Lincoln. And then you proceed to go into the, the museum. And I did drawings for just about every single piece of that museum. So, oh, wow. Very cool. Something that we're going to have to definitely make a trek to visit now. <laughs> for <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, all right. So, you know, when I met you at the comic convention not too long ago, you tried to sell me your book of sketches. And from that day, I've been regretting that I didn't buy that. I did buy your comic book, which was, was terrific. Um, But you know, like if somebody listening or myself wants to go get that book of sketches, how can we find it? Well, right now you can find it on eBay. It's called, it's called in the trenches, the theme park art of topper helmers. Hmm. That's everything from Harry Potter to game of Thrones to, uh, Beatrix Potter to Walking Dead to different superhero DC superhero stuff. Um, a lot of dinosaur parks because I, I was doing a lot of dinosaur parks. I've probably done seven or eight of them worldwide. Mm, Every time they okay. build a hole, you know, they dig a hole in China, they find a new dinosaur. So, <laughs> you know, and, and, and the nice thing about that is you don't have to pay for an IP. You know, yeah. oh, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so you don't have to pay Disney to have, you know, to do Mickey Mouse because dinosaurs, you know, nobody can own those. So um, you can you can find in the trenches, soft cover, hard cover. Then there's not a lot of hard covers left on eBay. Or if you wait till tomorrow. Well, by the time this airs, it'll be on Kickstarter. It's one of the add ons. You can you can actually add it on to oh. the, the book volume two. Nice. Okay. And that was going to be the next point I was going to make. You're starting a Kickstarter. We're recording this May 16th and on the 17th, it's launching for volume two of cloud Raider Tra- tales. Yes. Um, and as I said, I did pick that up when I met you and really enjoyed the adventure that you told me I was going on. So I'm excited to get in on Kickstarter here with, with the next volume. Um, did you like the way it ended? I did, yeah. Um, <laughs> I got a lot of I got a lot of grief for that. Did you? Because <laughs> yeah. when when the book came out last August, everybody was like, "This is really fun," but what happens? Well, yeah, you have, you, know, you have to wait a year. You know? Well, and maybe it's because I know that the next volume is is now ready and and going to be coming out. So, um, you know, I'm just re- I'm used to reading comics that leave cliffhangers, and I, I'm just ready to get a hold of it and get, you know, the next chapter. So um, yeah, I, you know, we will definitely put the Kickstarter information into our show notes uh, so that the listeners can, and can find that. Um, And I'm going to make sure I get that add on for that sketchbook. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So um, this has been a real treat and I hope uh, the listeners have really enjoyed this as well uh you know we've talked about doing more more conversations with you and uh i hope you are willing to do that as well um i i would this has been a lot of fun i would love to do it um yes so thank you so much for joining us this has been Mm -hmm. a real treat a real treat again I i will get you in touch with a few other imagineers so i'm not the only one and everybody we i mean i could go story for story all day long i mean for another five or six hours so and we want to hear them <laughs> yes we do we absolutely yes, do definitely yeah <laughs> i've got some very funny stories some serious stuff i mean you know whatever you want to know about disney if i if i know it and i can share it 
for sure. Yeah. But we want to hear all the fun stories. <laughs> I, I've got a lot more fun stories. I mean, stuff that will just laugh for hours. Well, that was a lot of fun. Brian, what do you think? Uh, that conversation with Topper was incredible. Uh, these stories that he just gave us are unbelievable. I keep saying unbelievable because I just, I really enjoyed that conversation. Yeah. I can't wait to hear more <laughs> from this guy because uh, it was so fun. It was so fun just to hear the stories. It was so fun to kind of like hear the background of everything and, and kind of how everything works. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I as well. And as you may have noticed, he did mention artwork and wanting to um, do more with us and show us some of his artwork. So we're going to be looking into getting him on video and uh, allowing him to do that. So I can't wait for those conversations. And make sure you go check out Topper's Kickstarter for his comic book, Cloud Raider Tales. We will have the link in the show notes. But like we always say, some live close, but others don't. So let's talk about it. We'll see you next time on Miles from Main Street. <laughs>